In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure your timeline. And more specifically, I'm going to show you a really neat feature that you're probably not using if you've never explored your configuration of your timeline. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Make sure you drop a like if you get value out of this video. And most importantly, don't forget to check out the links in the description as I have links to my merch store, my other podcast that we're really trying to get to a thousand subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed over there, make sure you check that one out. And also my paid courses. So if you want to take your skills to the next level, make sure you check out my Udemy courses as they're going to help you achieve your goals. All right, let's jump into Jira and let's talk about timeline configurations. So first of all, if you are inside of Jira and you do not see timelines, do not worry. Timelines is something that you can turn on and it's completely free. This is not the Jira advanced roadmap or the advanced timeline or plans or whatever you want to call it because it has so many different identities. This is something that every scrum and Kanban company or team managed project should have. Now in this demo, I'm going to be focusing on those scrum company managed projects because you know those are my bread and butter, but this should work for other types as well. So inside of your Jira project, normally right above backlog, you should see a timeline. This is almost always there. And in fact, it's almost always there until somebody removes it. If you don't see it, that means somebody took it away. And I'm going to show you how to turn it on because then the next part is going to be really interesting. So to turn it on, all you need to do is either click on your backlog or active sprint. Either of these are going to get you there. We're going to swing ourselves over to the far right, click on these ellipses, click on configure board. Once you're there, we want to go all the way down and find timeline. Now, once you click on timeline, you're going to want to enable the timeline. Now, before we get too far and show you what the next slider does, let me go back into the timeline and give you a sense of appreciation as to why we're going to slide and turn on that second slider. So back over on timeline, when you have your epics, you're going to be able to create epics and you're going to be able to create those stories, tasks or bugs below that epic. But when you look at the calendar view over here on the right, you're going to be tempted to create dates and normally you can. So I just have to drag your mouse and you're going to be able to create dates for these epics. And as you can see, it's really, really simple to just simply drag and drop and you got your dates created. But what happens when you try to create dates for these stories? Well, traditionally, at least the way Atlassian intended this out of the box was that your stories, since they get planned into your sprints, they inherit the value from the sprint. And I think personally, this is a good idea because if you're a true agile organization, you shouldn't be putting start and end dates on your stories because the end date of your story, well, it happens to be the end date of your sprint. Your team has the autonomy and they should be accountable to figuring it out and making sure that within the bounds, within the time box that your sprint has defined for them, that they get their stuff done. Now, some teams like to micromanage it a little bit more. And so it's frustrating when you can't slide those sliders. Now, of course, we can set the start date and the due date on the fields and within the stories, but it's still not going to yield us the view within the timeline. So to do that, we need to go back into the timeline settings and we need to slide that second slider. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Now, you could essentially go back to the backlog and the active sprint and click on that configure board like we did moments ago. But this time you don't want to do that because now that your timeline's enabled, you have a direct shortcut to that configuration. So within your timeline, swing yourself back again to that same right side and click on those three dots. But this time you're going to notice that the menu option is different. This time it says configure timeline. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And that's going to take us basically shortcut it straight to that timeline view. And so now here, we're going to want to turn on include child level issues. When you do that, you have two options. You can schedule by start and due dates, which is what I think you're going to want to do if you feel like you're missing out on this feature. I wouldn't do schedule by sprint dates because that's the default. That's what happens automatically when you don't have the slider on. And so since we don't want that or we don't care for that, we want to make sure that the very first radio button here, schedule by start and due dates is enabled. Once that's there, you got to click back to board. And unfortunately, now you got to go back to the timeline. So I got to click on timeline. And now when I expand my epics, watch what happens. I should be able to, in theory, be able to hover over these issues. And you'll notice that I now have my little slider. So if I wanted to, again, not recommend it, but if I wanted to, I could essentially say, well, this story should take this long, 15 days. This story should take another 
13 days. This story is a quick one, a six day, and then we got like another three day one here. And so now you can start building out your roadmaps and your timelines in this view, which I think is really beneficial. Again, if you want that level of control, that level of micromanagement, because now it's very easy for you to visualize and see not only the date for the epic, which is important, right? Because we should have like a North Star. We should know when we think something's going to get done. But then we can now do that same estimation for the story. Again, now I'm not the biggest fan. It's a little bit of an anti-practice, especially if you're trying to be an agile organization. You should really work on that trust and, and increasing that accountability and commitment of your team. And if they're rolling from sprint to sprint, that doesn't mean that they have a I don't know my due date problem. That probably means that that story is a little bit too big or too undefined. And that story really wasn't ready to be put into the sprint. So I would tackle that problem instead. But again, because I'm here to help you and I'm here to just show you the power and what the art of the possible within Jira. This is something that you may want to go and enable because it might just give you that level of control, that level of, of just information that you feel like you're going to need in order to help guide your team to a better location. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you smash the subscribe button and don't forget to check out those links below because I have that amazing merch, really, really cool stuff on there. So go check them all out. And I also have my Udemy course. So if you want to take these skills to the next level, right? If you're a new Jira admin or maybe you're a new Jira scrum master, then those courses that I have available for you in Udemy, link in the description, they're going to help you take those skills to the next level with in-depth, full length courses that you can take for a very small fee. So that's it for this video. Make sure you support the channel and I'll see you in the next one.